Shut up and sit down. Welcome back to the Tiki Sessions. This week we're talking to Claire Johnson from the Railway Arms in Colerain. As always, beside me we have Ash. I'm so excited to have Claire along. Claire runs an amazing pub in Colerain and is a, a big figure in the North Coast area, so I'm, I'm delighted to have you along. And Good to be here. I have made you a lovely, I know you're a big fan of tequila, uh -huh. so what I have done is made you a nice, uh, it's a twist on a Tommy's margarita, but I'm using this lovely mezcal here, which is called o o Osho de Dios. Um, sorry for my Spanish, anyone who's offended. I've got this with a mixture of Cointreau, fresh lime juice, and a little bit of agave syrup. Wow, sounds good. And we've got it um, on the rim. We've got a nice bit of salt, pepper, chili, and mint. Um, so I hope you enjoy that, and w welcome along to the Tiki Session. Thank you for having me. No so Claire, um, first of all, you're obviously, uh, you run the Railway Arms yep. in Korean. Tell us a bit about the bar. Um, well, we've been in the business now since 1975, or in the family since 1975. Um, my mum and dad took it over. They came from a pub in the country and then wanted to come to a town and really through Guinness, um, give them the advice to, to, that the Railway Arms was for sale. And that was 1975. And then I took it over uh, 19 years ago. Um, I was nursing and my brother was running it and he met a girl from San Francisco and he went over there and got married and I took a year out of nursing and have never left there since. Okay, so, right, let me get this right. So, you're nursing, so, yep. so you're working for the NHS and you one day go, I'm gonna take over the family business uh, and go and start running a bar in Colerain. Mm -hmm. what, what did the people that you were working with at that time say to you that, you know, I'm quitting nursing and I'm gonna run a bar? Yeah, it was mixed feelings. Um, I think some people thought I was crazy yeah. uh, going to, you know, was very happy in my nursing job, loved it. Um, but there was always that passion there. It was always something I wanted to do. I thought that probably Sean and I would go into the business together. Um, but, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't not take the opportunity. I had to see, and I, you know, I took the career break and the second year I still wasn't sure did I, did I want to give up the nursing and took a second year career break. But I knew I was never going to go back. I, I, I love it. I really do love it. So. One of the big things for me in hospitality, or people who are good at hospitality is, and we, when you try to break it down, the common denominator is empathy. And like obviously as a nurse, you have to show empathy in spades. And I think that when you, when you ha are empathetic, and I think that's what makes people so good in hospitality, like yourself and all the staff that you have up in mm -hmm. the Railway Arms, they're all very good at welcoming people and they're just, they, they, they love the hospitality yeah. industry. So it's so good to know that that's where you've come from and that's how it's sort of filtered out with your staff. I think, you know, when you're working behind the bar, you're also responsible for the people that you're serving in lots of ways. But, you know, a lot of people are there because they want to talk to you and they want company and they want to share their stories and their lives. And sometimes we're all they have, yeah. you know, and it, so it's so important. And I think you have to be a people person and you have to want to, to communicate with people to, to make it work. And I certainly know I'm very lucky in Johnson's with my staff as well are amazing, but you know, there is, a, very large sense of community in Johnson's and it, 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 it works. It's and class and it's, it's the perfect bar where you can go in like if you've just finished work and you go in on a Friday afternoon and you've got the old boys sitting in the corner mm -hmm. and you've got Big Paul in behind the bar, you've got yourself oh. and it's just good crack. How does that taste? Bro? Excellent, really good, <laughs> really good. Um, perfect. So you took over the bar 19 years ago. Yep. Um, obviously had some form of bar experience before you took it over because it had been We'd in the family. We'd grown up in it. Yeah. What were your priorities when you took it over? Like, you know, Ash is just about to start uh, running the Tiki Bar here, and he has his hopes and dreams um, for that bar. And obviously, 19 years ago, you had that as well, yep. and you had your idea and your plan of what you wanted Johnson's to be. Mm -hmm. So at that time, what was that? Well, I think whenever I went into the bar, what I sensed was <laughs> it was very much a, a worker man, a man-oriented bar. And one thing with obviously myself being a female was I wanted to make sure that girls would feel comfortable to come into it. So that was the, the first thing I did, there was railings on the windows and the first thing I did was take the railings off the windows and I remember how many comments I got at the time to say that all of a sudden they thought they couldn't come in. People, the girls thought that they weren't, that they weren't allowed to come into the bar, it was just one of those things, but that they realised that obviously it was, it was very friendly and welcoming. So that, and also I could see where, you know, you, you can't sit back and, and not make changes and do things and keep people, people need to be interested and need to know that you have an interest in what you're doing. So I introduced quizzes and I started to, to open on Sundays, which my family hadn't done. And, 
you know, we have a big Liverpool following and I began with just opening for the Liverpool matches and then I saw people wanted it. So, you know, I tried to do what I could see that people wanted. Um, and also I was getting a buzz from that because it was giving me, I, I could see things were working. Most things were working. If they didn't work, that was okay. But if they did, then we, we ran with them. Yeah, you know, from my background in business as well, I always say there's no such thing as a bad idea. There's only an idea You've tried. Got to try. If it doesn't work, you change it and you That's move it. on. So you're talking about, you know, the way the bar was, taking the bars off the windows to, to, to make it more appealing for young girls to come mm -hmm. in and so on and so forth. Is it right in saying that you look at the bar as a hub for the community, not just a pub where you can come in and buy drink, but it is a community area? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Johnson's has always been known that. My mum and dad, you know, were very involved in it and very involved in the community. And I think the family, the fact that we've been a family that have been in the business, you know, it, it helps and we've always been there. There's always, there's nearly always a Johnson there or somebody behind the counter that, that, that people know that they can come in and speak to. And, you know, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I could tell you who's going to be in and, and where they're going to be sitting at. And when they're not there, then we're worried about them, mm -hmm. you know. And not just me, my other customers and, and my staff, it's very, I, I'm very lucky, I have to say. I'm very lucky because it is very friendly and, and family oriented and people genuinely care about each other. I think, you're, I think you're doing yourself a disservice and you're lucky because you do breed, you, like, you kind of bring in this lovely, like I've done, I had the benefit of doing a few training sessions with mm -hmm. your guys and they're, they're so interested, they're mm -hmm. so engaged and that comes I've from you. I've been so lucky. And uh, like one of the things you mentioned earlier on and it's a big thing I've had over the years where I've ran cocktail competitions and out of maybe seven or eight years I had one female competitor and we always tried to sort of promote and like for me it's it's always been seen as a male dominated area and mm -hmm. if I was to try and recruit for this bar I know I'm going to get 95% male like bartender ap applicants mm -hmm. and I, I don't know is it, a, is it something that, like how would you or what advice would you give a, a young female who wants to get into the hospitality industry especially the bar yeah well I think the first thing is just have the confidence yeah. you know and I think maybe that, that it, it's difficult you, you put yourself out there in front of a majority male customer base um, so you've got to have that confidence and you know if, if you've the personality that can shine through you're 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 on a winner yeah. you know and you know it, it's great you're around people um, and if you have ideas you'll, you'll step up the ladder quickly you know and what I always found was I had a very good relationship with my staff but I, I took their ideas and you know we either worked it out, and I didn't mind their criticism either because I don't yeah. know everything and yeah. you know I, I, I'm still learning things you know and I get it from other places and other ideas from other competitors and stuff but you know, just if you want to do it and you feel you've got a passion for it, then it is a great, great career. I think it's a sign of a good manager, a good owner, is the ability to listen and yeah. not have that ego. We talk about egos a lot in this, but it's um, it's how you set aside the ego and actually listen to constructive mm -hmm. feedback. And, and I hear Claire's also opening Corian's first tiki bar this summer as well. So she knows <laughs> whenever, whenever well, she's looking for no. competition from, you know. Um, so, you know, you're talking about family and, you know, you're, t you're, you're talking about your, your customers coming in and how you know who's going to be there on a Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday night or whatever. The last year and a half has been pretty crap. For, yeah. for everybody, um, you know, with COVID coming in and everything shutting down, but especially for the hospitality industry, because basically life and soul and your bread and butter has been pulled out from under mm -hmm. you. Um, I know the breweries were quite good during the first lockdown, yeah. but obviously they're a business themselves and the second lockdown has been a lot harder. What's the last year and a half been like? Very tough. Yeah. Very tough. I mean, I'm even quite emotional just thinking about it. It's been um, a very rough year. Um, the worry just is, you know, where we, when we come out of it, will we be able to make things work? And, you know, we're all sitting here now in debt, a lot more debt than we ever were a year and a half ago. And that pressure and to live under the restrictions, you know, and I, and I, I was only open for three weeks. So for not working for, for a year now and only to be open three weeks. And I could see the, pr the pressures that are already there with, with the opening and being restricted. But, you know, you, every morning I wake up and I have the worries of, of how we'll survive this and whether we will survive it. And, you know, I was very lucky. I was, a, you know, I, I was a steady bar, but I just that all got taken away and, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's frightening. And it's, it's one of those things that you couldn't have planned for. Like, nobody knew it was coming no. and it came so quick. Yep. And, you know, the way it's been handled made, maybe by government and stuff, you know, everybody... Uh, is, is good to criticise and so on and so forth but has there been a stage uh, you know it's been incredibly hard but has there been a stage that you've just thought about walking away no no never Amazing. never um, no, no. never I have to say I, what, what I, I can't wait to do is, is get back at it 
and, and make it work because I believe I can, I believe that I, I want it enough and I still my passion is there. Maybe even more so now, you know, because yeah. I, I had been there 19 years and you go to work and you just, it's all part of your routine. But all of a sudden it has to start again and, and, and I need to find ways of making it work. And, you know, we're the centre of Korean, you know, we're, we're in a main position there and, and people rely on me as well and rely on the bar. So I want to be back for the, for the community to do that. And whenever the bar reopens, pulling that first pint, like oh. I'm sure, I'm sure it's been a year since you pulled. Well, the pint. we were we were open for three weeks. Three weeks, and yeah. those three weeks, you know, it was great, you know, and then everybody, and it was tough. It was very tough, and and to work under restrictions is tough. But I, again, my team just we all pulled together, and and it was it was it was great. So to, the thought of pulling the pint again, I mean, everybody's talking about draft beer now. I'm wanting a pint of Guinness. My goodness, so many times I get messages <laughs> about that. So you know, it, it it'll be great. I can't wait to do it again. We're extremely lucky here tonight. You know, we're we're sat in a bar. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, there's there's people you know that, that haven't had that experience for so long. And you know, I I genuinely think that whenever bars open up, it, it will people will flock to them because you know it's it's going back. And there's so many bars like yours um, around the north coast that you can walk into any night of the week, and you can sit down and. It doesn't matter where you know people or not, the atmosphere mm -hmm. is good and you can sit down and talk. And people have been so restricted for the last year that I, I, I really do hope that for people like yourself that mm -hmm. the bars will be busy at the start. I don't think, and you know, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, I don't think things will go back to normal, whatever new normal mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think it's going to be whenever you reopen? Well, I think the toughest thing is that, you know, we have to build people's confidence again. Um, and it's going to be very tough. Obviously, we're going to open with restrictions and we're going to live like that for probably quite a while. Mm. So building people's confidence that they know that it's a safe environment to come into is going to be important, important and also to create an atmosphere that they, they don't want to stay at home. You know, that we, we need to get them out again. The longer this goes on, the, the harder it will be. But I, you know, I, I think we just all have to try and pull together and, and the vibe needs to be good and positive and we need to just constantly be promoting that. I think from my point of view, like that's where it falls on bartenders and, and hosts mm -hmm. to make people feel welcome, make them feel reassured that they've made the right choice in coming to this venue. And that's where you'll thrive because all your guys have such trust in you and they're reassured when they come through the very door and they get a smile and whatever. And I, I, like from my point of view, like the resilience that you've shown, even saying that it had never crossed your mind never to open up again, like you did some quite cool things, like you sort of pivoted through and you were, you offered different revenue yeah. streams. Obviously you were forced in the corner in some respects, yeah. but you came out and, and for me, you were one of the guys who diversified. Yeah. Through. Well, I knew I, I knew I couldn't sit back, you know, you, you sit back for a while, you know, initially we thought this was only going to go for six weeks and maybe three months and whatever. And, you know, it wasn't long before I realised this is, this is going to go for yeah. a lot longer. And so, the, you know, initially the only thing I could do was start some sort of off sales and I checked my legs, made sure I could do all that. And I went with it, and, and the, you know, the main idea was keeping the Railway Arms and Johnson's name in people's head, even if they weren't ordering that much. That wasn't that wasn't really important. It was it was making me feel that I was doing something that was useful and that was keeping our name out there. And then I started to kind of enjoy that, and, and I was still seeing people, and and you know, and I felt like I was I was useful. Um, and then I started to get into hampers, making hampers, and I set up a website then with Johnson's Food and Drink. And you know we're doing hampers and we're doing off sales and I've started to now be in touch with local distributors and we're doing you know um, deli products and you know it, it's it's great uh, you know I was very busy there thank goodness for Mother's Day and Valentine's and Christmas and so it's just different things to keep me going and to feel and I, I think also you know the future is going to be different pubs yeah. aren't going to be the same there will have to be other things to keep yeah. to keep us going we have bills to pay right you know so. I need to be doing things in the sideline that also, but it all comes together yeah. as Johnson's are really arms. And I think that's the, the, the like the, the pinnacle of good business is, is not seeing a crisis and seeing an opportunity and saying, right, yep. this isn't what I would be doing ordinarily, but yep. I need to do this. Absolutely. And it, it's just incredible to see you guys pivot and be able to offer that stuff. And hopefully that'll be another revenue stream when things get back opening again and you'll have the bar as well as those other I think things. You just, you just can't give up. Yeah. You know, well, that, really. that's it. And you know, COVID has been devastating worldwide, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting because people have really realigned their priorities and Absolutely. stuff. And you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, we started Rawway during COVID. Um, you've diversified your business as well. And I think, you know, because of the adversity that we, as a planet we've come across, there's, you know, there's gonna be a lot of positives come out the other mm -hmm. side as well. You know, life is hard and life is tough and it's always sent to te test us, but 
people like yourself, Claire, that are resilient to that and are determined that you're not going to get beaten and you're going to come out mm -hmm. the other side. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. And, you know, are these things that you've done that do you think you're going to keep those on whenever the Pavara reopens? Yeah, I, I would like to and I want to and I, and I also think it will be needed. So, yes, I mean, you know, when you set up a website and you realise maybe I should have done that before and this has given, you know, this has made me do it. But, it, it you know, there, there was that opportunity before and now I, I'm sitting here. I can't wait to get my bar opened again. I can't wait to serve pints again. But I also want to build my website and I want to make a business into my hampers and, and deli products. And, and, you know, I have a little, little ideas for the bar or deli and stuff. And so... You know, I've now got exciting ideas again. Brilliant. Just need to get open, get going again, and let's try and make it all work together and build it together. Brilliant. And last night I was doing some research <laughs> on you and doing a bit of Facebook stalking. <laughs> and one thing that I took from from your Facebook feed is that you're a massive supporter of independent local businesses. Is that an important industry for you? Absolutely. I mean, I always felt it was important. <laughs> Whenever somebody shares your post when you're advertising or doing something, you, you, you feel a sense of, of, of pleasure, happiness that somebody's done that for you, that they're supporting you. Um, I think more than ever now, we have to all support each other mm -hmm. because we're all in business. We might be competing against each other in some aspects, but we all, you know, my, my dad always taught me that if, if your neighbour is doing well, then you're probably doing well too. And so you should be supporting each other rather than, than, than trying to compete. So, you know, sharing and, and wanting your business to do well and your business to do well, that's what we need to be doing. And, and what I'm seeing is, you know, the local community, everybody is trying to help each other. Everybody's trying to promote each other. You know, even the fact that I've gone, you know, when I started doing my hampers, I was, I was going to the big supermarket chains and buying products. And then I was like, oh, hold on. I need to be looking after the local guys here. I, I would prefer to be doing business with these guys. And everybody that I approached was so, I mean, and, and, you know, it's only small business there at the minute, but everybody was so pleased that I'd came to them. And I think it's very important to be promoting each other. Definitely. And I, like, I think that's the essence of what, like, why we started this is to try and get people to collaborate and, and like, push each other on. And, Yes, there may be overlaps in, in different sort of competitors or whatever, but the essence is that a lot of businesses in the North Coast want each other to do well because ultimately, if they do well, it'll bring more people to Definitely. the area and we all do Definitely. well. And I think that's what we are all striving for. Which yeah, is and that, that's the same. Like whenever we launched a company, our opening post, Instagram post, mentioned all of the people that would technically be classed as our competitors. Mm -hmm. But I'm going, <clears throat> I want to be part of, of, of the, mm -hmm. this industry. And if we can grow as multiple com companies Absolutely. together, it's only ever going to make us stronger, yeah. you know, and that, that's one of the great things that I noticed from your Facebook is that you are constantly pushing those businesses. Um, and it's really cool that, you know, you're giving back to those businesses as well. So that is, you know. It's just been good to each other. <coughs> I think I think it works, you know, and helping each other out. And I, I saw that even, when, you know, when we shut down in March, you know, there, there's four bars, we're all beside each other. And, you know, we all communicated, we all kept each other in the loop of the grants and whatever was going and made sure, you know, and it, you know, I saw, I already knew we were friends, but I really saw it then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about family there. So you are, and I hope you don't mind me asking, but Hugh, your father passed away yep. um, during COVID. Again, a, such a well-respected person in the local area. Um, you know, bar wasn't open because of COVID and stuff like that. You know, how, do you think whenever you get reopened again, you know, there's going to be a celebration for Hugh in the bar. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Johnson's was his life, yeah. and uh, you know, he died in May, and it was, you know, it was a very tough time. And to be honest, if he had witnessed all this, what's going on the last year, it would have broke his heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and and the eighty-seven, not really understanding why I wasn't going to work and what COVID was. So, I mean, you know, when we get open again, well, he's talked about so much. He's still talked about, I, I'm just blown away sometimes mm -hmm. with the messages I get still about dad. Yeah. So, you know, he's always celebrated in the bar and he, and he certainly will be again. Fantastic, so, fantastic. That's good. And you're a huge golf lover. Yes. And uh, again, through my Facebook stalking of you last <laughs> night, um, there's a fantastic photograph of you working at the Irish Open. So yeah. what was the crack there? What were well, you doing? Well, I was um, uh, scoring at the Irish Open, but I actually ended up having an amazing opportunity from that because on the Pro-Am I, I scored with a guy that um, was very high up in Tory Pines and then his wife came along 
Um, she walked the last nine holes with me and then they invited me over the following nice. year. So the following year I scored in Tory Pines then. Oh, so gosh. super but the, the Irish Open I will it was amazing. Never yeah. forget it, Port Shirt, it was it was superb. I mean we were lucky we've had you know, we've had so the British Open here we you know so so lucky but the Irish Open to me seems like something really special. Uh, the, the, the it was sun on that Saturday or the oh, Sunday was it? Was it was just uh, incredible. It was amazing, just an amazing weekend or amazing yeah. few days. But yeah. I mean the Port Shirt, North Coast, Golf, Beach how lucky are we, you know? I, I always say that if the North Coast had like three months of 30 degrees oh, weather, it, it would be one of the biggest holiday yeah. hotspots well, in the world, doubt, you know? Without a doubt. I mean, look at it, look how busy it's been through COVID last yeah. summer, you know? So um, I think staycation will be the same this year, but which is brilliant for all of us yeah. because, yeah, yeah. you know, people want to come here and I think we're known as welcoming people. So, you know, I, I hopefully it'll, it will be busy again. And last summer, I believe you tried surfing. Yes. And how did you find that? Had, uh, you, had you never done it before? Well, I'd done it once in Australia. I went to Australia for a year and I, and I had done it once there. Um, but the, the Nilo, my nephew, and, and Bo, um, my partner's daughter, um, we, we, we did a course and took them surfing and got them bored. So it, um, it was great. I'm not any good at it. No, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I got back in the water after 20 <laughs> years during lockdown, um, as so many people did. I don't crap at it. But it's not about that. Every time I go in, I come out smiling. I come out cold, but I come out smiling. It's such a funny one because like, my kids are taking the hand out of me at the minute because I surfed for years and enjoyed surfing. But I kind of got to a point where I wasn't getting any better and I wasn't really enjoying it. And now I bodyboard, but it's 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 destroying my kids and their street cred. If I'm walking down with a set of fins and a bodyboard, I look like a, oh, a bit yeah. of a goat in their heads. But um, I'm loving it like because I go on a bodyboard and I'm smiling from ear to ear. And it, the, they always say the best surfer is the one with the biggest smile. So uh -huh. it's, it's so much yourself. fun. Yeah. I think in the water, it's just it, it, it's fun. And it's I, th great. I think we're phenomenally lucky for where we live because mm -hmm. if you think you know living in Korea and Port Shirt, Port Rush, what twenty beaches within mm -hmm. ten minute drive of us, you know, and world class beaches, mm -hmm. you know. Um, back to the bar then. You've got the younger clientele. You've got the older clientele. You've obviously got the characters. Who are the best characters in the bar? Oh my goodness, well, <laughs> if I named any, I would get in trouble probably. Um, but we have, I, I have quite a few regulars, as I say, that are there most days. Um, and I have a corner at the top end of the bar, and I'll not just tell you the name on camera, but uh, they named it themselves and there's a plaque up for them. Um, there's about 10 or 12 of them, and they're in most days. Yeah. And the crack is just unbelievable. Brilliant. It really is. You know, there's just a lot of banter. And uh, Paul, Greg and Seamus, my barman, they just, you know, they, they love it and thrive of it. So when you come in as a stranger, you know, I think you end up enjoying it. Yeah. Because you either, you either get pulled in and get involved or, or you just, you can, you can watch it, you know, and so it's great. I have a lot, I have a lot of great customers, a lot of great regulars. So. And, and your location's really good as well yeah. because you're, you know, you're the railway arms because you're right outside yeah. the railway station. Yeah. So again, whenever you have people that maybe haven't been to Korean before, I know if I go to Cardiff or if I go to Bristol <laughs> and I get off the train, if there's a bar across the road, I'm going in for a pint, yep. you know what I mean? They're so not again, always very welcoming to be fair. No, you're like, they're I mean, not, you know. Well, um, I think they definitely, <laughs> Yours is yeah. a brilliant example of where you walk in and the, and the locals just don't turn around and look at you like something from League of well, Gentlemen. We, we always get that compliment, you know, that, yeah. that people are made feel welcome. So, uh, you know, and, and and my regulars, those, those characters you talk about, you know, when the door opens, they want to, but they, 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 they make people feel, for, you know, welcome, yeah. which is great because, as you say, you can go in somewhere and you're like, oh. Yeah. So they're almost <laughs> they're almost unpaid members of staff, really. They're the they are. They are. They're, they're, that's uh, that's a very good way of saying it. They are. And honest. live music's important in your bar. Yeah, with live music every Saturday night, most Sunday evenings after the football. Sunday, a sporting venue. You know, it's a sporting venue, and and football is very important for us. And you know, the horse racing. So we have live music on a Saturday night after the sport's over and then on a Sunday, as soon as the football's over, we have music at six. Um, and people seem to love it. It's great to say that, you know, I brought live music in and it was definitely one of, the, one of the best things I did because people were looking a little bit more and you've got to give up, you know, people a reason to come out. There's no, but they can sit at home all they want, but if you've got music or you've got some sort of food option or, or cocktails, you know, I did the cocktails for setting up again actually yeah. for those three weeks. They were brilliant and, and, and people I had, we said to my mum years ago, Johnson's not the place for cocktails, Claire, nobody will buy them. But you know, times change and, and people want them and we sold, my goodness, they, they did so well for I us think in it's about three weeks. I think it's because people have been at home for so long yeah. during the restrictions or whatever and it's given them a reason to come out and something they can't get at home. So mm -hmm. they can buy tw tw 12 Carlsberg for whatever price yeah. these days at the mills. But um, it's given those added extra value and making people feel like you're going the extra mile, which you Absolutely. do day in, day out. And I think you taught us something, you know, you, uh, 
one of the things that we were guilty of, and it was just a little bit maybe shy, that we weren't confident in making our cocktails before. And then Ashley came and did the training there before we, you know, the three weeks that we were open during COVID. Um, and you made us do it at the bar, you know, in front of the customers and we displayed it. And you gave us the confidence that night and it worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. And the staff then started to enjoy doing it, that the, mm -hmm. they had the audience, you know. And then, you know, that makes this person buy and this person buy and I think with it Northern works. Irish people and in particular North Coast, they were quite humble people. You don't want to be the, the sort of guy standing in front of making cocktails. <laughs> but sometimes it's good for the business when you realise the, the impact on the GP whenever you're mm -hmm. actually serving a set of like a load of cocktails over here and these guys start buying and you see the incremental value that that drives uh -huh. to the business and how you can sort of keep keep each other in a business and a job really that's the way forward mm -hmm. and so this summer reopening hopefully, yes, hopefully fingers yes. crossed if everyone uh -huh. behaves themselves what's the, what are your main priorities when you get back open get the locals back in yeah get the taps flowing uh, yeah obviously all, all the, the the main things are setting things up i think the most important thing is making sure that my staff are happy again and, and comfortable to come back to work um and you know we set it up that it's a, a safe environment again like we did before and then making sure that when you come in the door that you feel that we are looking after you and that you're comfortable and we and we meet people's needs and that you know uh, happy a happy safe bar is all i can ask for I'm busy, I hope as well. <laughs> busy. Um, well, listen, we wish you all the best for thank the you. reopening. Thank you, and thank you for having me tonight. And your cocktail's beautiful. Soon. Pleasure, Claire. Mm -hmm. Hopefully see you in here a few more times. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Thanks very much, Claire. Well, thank you. Cheers. Cheers.